deadly accident. Very sad day for us here at the refinery. The nation's largest crane collapses. It's a dangerous business. A man who witnessed the terrifying moments tells us what happened. Our hearts and prayers certainly go out to the families. And what we've learned. On July 18, 2008, a Bursa crane TC-36000 collapsed at Houston Refining, causing four fatalities and six injuries. This presentation will provide the root causes of the collapse and recommendations to prevent a reoccurrence. The incident occurred at Houston Refining in preparation for turnaround work to be performed on a coker unit. In order to do the turnaround work, a Bursa crane, one of the largest mobile cranes in the world, was needed in order to perform a lift. Deep South Crane and Rigging was subcontracted to complete this portion of the work. The Bursa Crane TC-36000 was chosen for this turnaround because of its ability to lift heavy loads at long radii and still have the ability to swing in close quarters. This crane has completed 14 jobs in its eight-year career with no prior incidents. Key operating parts of the Bursa Crane are main boom, mast, and auxiliary counterweight platform. On July 18, 2008, a Deep South crew consisting of the crane operator, the superintendent, and several riggers were in the final phases of a three-week crane assembly process in preparation for the actual lift. In particular, the crew was in the process of attaching pendant bars from the mast to the auxiliary counterweight platform. This activity is considered a routine operation and not part of the actual lift. During any operation of the crane, the superintendent and the crane operator work together in that the superintendent relays instructions to the operator for any crane movement. While working at high boom angles with the Bursa Crane TC-36000, it is possible for the crane to be placed into overhaul. This is a condition whereby the weight of the boom and its attachments will cause the boom to fall in an undesired direction. The crane operator has a predefined overhaul chart that is consulted prior to each operation. For the crane configuration on July 18, 2008, the overhaul chart indicated that the minimum safe operating radius of the boom was 120 feet. This crane requires two operators, a superintendent who supervises work from the ground and an operator positioned in the crane cab. On the morning of the incident, the superintendent had two separate conversations with the operator to discuss the overhaul chart. Given that the chart indicated a minimum safe radius of 120 feet, the superintendent instructed the operator to not allow the boom within 150 feet, providing an extra safety margin. Subsequent to the event, the crane's owner Deep South verified the overhaul chart used and calculated that the chart includes a safety factor taking wind into account. With this factor removed, the overhaul position reduces to 110 feet. In addition, Houston Refining hired Becht Engineering to determine the crane's point of instability defined as when the mast and boom fall backwards due to unbalanced forces. This angle was calculated to be 77.4 degrees or a minimum radius of 97.1 feet. The overhaul chart indicated the minimum safe operating radius was 120 feet and Becht has calculated that the point of instability is 97.1 feet. Houston Refining has several security video cameras and the event was captured on three of them. Analysis of the video indicates that at approximately 10.49 a.m., the boom was positioned at a 108-foot radius less than the overhaul chart minimum. The boom was operated less than 120 foot from this time until the incident. Just prior to the incident, the boom was positioned at approximately 95 feet, a point less than the calculated instability point. A joint investigation between Lyondell Bissell, the general turnaround contractor, Wyatt Field Services and the subcontractor Deep South was conducted using Apollo root cause methodology. The primary root cause of the event is that the crane was placed in an overhaul position less than 120 feet recommended by the overhaul chart and operated to less than 97.1 feet, the point of instability. The second root cause is that in previous lifts the Versa crane has been operated with the auxiliary counterweight platform at a radius of less than 100 feet usually 95 feet. This was the first lift in the crane's history to have the auxiliary counterweight platform at 105 feet from the center line of the crane. This is significant because the boom travels in conjunction with the mast. As the mast is positioned the additional 10 feet, the boom can move between 15 to 30 feet 
depending on its starting position. It is also significant because the starting boom radius was not verified by tape as Deep South's usual practice. The boom was moved and operated in an overhaul position. The hazard associated with operating an overhaul is understood by the superintendent and crane operators. However, in this instance, the overhaul was not recognized by either one. The investigation team made several recommendations to prevent similar incidents with specialty cranes. Identify, communicate, and verify overhaul position for all crane activities. Develop procedures to identify overhaul conditions for all crane activities and train superintendent and operators on roles and responsibilities from procedure. Completion of this item addresses the crane overhaul and changes in auxiliary counterweight positions. To correct causes associated with recognition of overhaul, the team recommends that Deep South provide independent boom and mass radius indication for the superintendent and crane operator and that Deep South evaluate addition of engineered controls to prevent overhaul situations. Engineered controls to consider include internal and external automatic alarms, independent indicators for cab and ground level crane operation, and overhaul limits based on condition of mechanical and fail-safe stops. Several of the root and contributing causes are due to failure to identify and mitigate risk with crane operation. To prevent this, the investigation team recommends that Deep South adopts a risk-based safety approach to crane operation. This includes process hazard analysis, management of change, incident investigation, operating procedures, development of process safety information, and a detailed operator certification and recertification program. The investigation surfaced that although the crane operator had previous experience operating Versa cranes, he had minimal experience with this size Versa crane. Therefore, we recommend that Deep South establishes training requirements and methodology to ensure adequate seat time through cross-training opportunities or other equivalent methods are employed. Two contributing causes involve possible distractions to the superintendent during crane operation and an assumption by the superintendent that the crane operator had followed his instructions on boom position. To prevent these causes, the team recommends that Deep South develop a communication protocol and procedure between the superintendent and operator that clearly defines flagging roles and responsibilities with defined modes of communication. The team also recommends that Wyatt's Field Services establish procedures to review and approve communication plans. Finally, the team recommends that Lyondell Bissell modify its crane standard to ensure adequate selection and performance criteria for contractors using Versa cranes or similar specialty.